The time finally came to leave Puerto Rico at the dock and we departed around 1 p.m. For those of you who are new here, my name is Lauren. I'm living aboard my 1993 Benito with my kitten, Mako. I followed my heart from Missouri to the Bahamas with the dream of living a sustainable and fully immersed life on the ocean. I hope you enjoy following along and joining this trying but amazing life. Thank you so much for subscribing and following along. Your support, especially Patreons, means the world to me and makes this dream possible. After cheersing and getting our heading set up, we set sail, we turned off the engine and went around the southwest side of Puerto Rico before hitting that west side, which took until about sunset. We had six to eight foot seas behind us. We were having a blast, or at least I was. I got to relax, read my book, I had a little workout even, and just enjoyed having the sails up, being out of the dock, and being on my own boat, sailing for the first time. I was also having a ton of fun surfing the waves and seeing how fast my boat was surfing and the max speed it would go. I think it got up to like 12 knots at one point, but I was just having an absolute blast. I don't think a smile left my face. Um, most of that trip. Because I was so pumped, I took night shift number one and we rounded that corner in Puerto Rico and that's when David went down for bed. I think that was probably around 8-ish p.m. and I took watch until 2 a.m. I got to see dolphins right before my shift ended, right when we got out to the ocean from being in between Puerto Rico and the DR which was really special to me because I saw dolphins at 2 a.m. the first time I crossed the Gulf Stream on a monohull once I got to the other side. So I really enjoyed that. That night, I woke up in the morning and I was so happy. I did not have the first night shift because it was my first time on my boat, first time like really sailing. And David had done it a million times and he definitely had the worst of it. He came down a million times for a jacket. It was splashing. I heard the wind howling. I kept waking up, checking everything. I don't think I really got much sleep, but I couldn't see what was going on downstairs. And at one point I was very happy I couldn't. Sunrise is my favorite time of day. I woke up in time for that and I could finally see the height of the waves, which were probably about 20 to 30 feet, we're thinking. We had 20 to 25 knots of wind. We were heavily reefed and this lasted about the whole day. and by evening the wind and the waves had died down a little bit. Day two was another gorgeous day. The wind had started to die down a little bit. The swells were starting to die down. I had the morning shift as usual by mid 10 a.m. ish. We were able to let out all the sails and still go the same speed. We are still comfy. We enjoyed the whole day. Um, another beautiful night, super easy. We had no issues until day three. Day three, we were going and kind of turning around Turks and the wind was more behind us and we were just kind of doing this. Um, our bow was just swinging like crazy. So then the sail would flop over, flop back. And after about two minutes, you're like, something's wrong. This is going to drive both of us insane. So um, we were looking at the autopilot and the autopilot was just rotating over and like 
super over rotating. I pulled out the manual. I can't tell you how many times I've pulled out the manuals. Um, these at this point, even the past three months, because now I am back in Florida and we tried to fix it. I was doing everything said, adjusting this. If this is higher, then it won't react as this much. Or if it's lower, it'll react more. A million things and nothing worked. So we hand steered for a little bit and think by that evening, we had realized we can put a wind heading. And so we lined my autopilot up with wind direction as the wind was dying too. I think by sunset, we had no sails out. We were just motoring, but we were still lined up with the wind direction. And that saved our lives. Obviously, we can't trust that 100% because the wind changes and it was going to be changing a lot that night, which is why we were losing our wind because it was all shifting and then it was going to pick back up. But that night, we had a beautiful sunset. We were going, we were passing by my iguana, the first island in the Bahamas. And it was just amazing. It was definitely a highlight and a surreal moment being in the Bahamas, even though we couldn't stop, but being in the Bahamas on my own boat, finally. Day three to day four, I think I took 90% of that night shift. We were motoring most of the way, a lot of hand steering, watching the wind. I was jamming out, just had a blast. Sunrise came and obviously I'm in heaven. And I was just on cloud nine, being back in the Bahamas. so excited everything went smoothly I had to wait for about three hours we pulled in here at 8 a.m. and it's 11:30 now and I'm gonna go eat and then we're gonna head up north Is pouring this morning. The, I can see stars. 
stars, but the moon is still covered by clouds. I have about 20 knots of wind into my face. Well, it's about 30 degrees now, so I can't sail, but it's better than being directly in my face like it was for the past six or seven hours. And as long as I don't hit a coral head tonight, I should be pretty good. But this is kind of insane for me. And I'm super stoked. I can't really feel much else right now. I'm going to be back here where I just left in one week, less than a week. Um, I'll be back in six days and or five days. And uh, there's already probably 50 to 100 boats. And I'll be here for New Year's Eve. So I'm super stoked about that. It's one of my favorite places on earth. And I can't wake up to see this water when I wake up. Um, well, I guess when the sun rises since I'm not going to sleep. But all excited. I get to see family for Christmas Eve. I get to load up my baby. I get to grab my little baby and little Mako. And make this my true home and come back to my home. Everything was going so well and I honestly couldn't be happier. I'm going flip it around. Going eight knots. I have ten feet of depth. I don't know my exact depth as far as what everything shows. Um, the wind is in the bottom right. Well, I guess this is I'm not exactly sure when my GPS when I'll hit the ground. I need to test that out on some sand at some point. But we were, I did have two feet below me. I'm assuming below me earlier. So um, I know I'm good as long as the thing says two feet. Actually at 1.7 I think too. So, so far so good. out all day. I got to start sailing around 1 p.m. Maybe it was 12. But I got to sail half the day. The engine's been off since. After 24 hours of hearing the engine, I finally I was so excited to turn it off. And it was beautiful out. It was absolutely gorgeous out. Sunny. I finished my book. And now I have a beautiful sunset. Eight, seven or eight hours until I hit the Gulf Stream, which I'm not sure how it's going to be today. Right now I'm getting 14, 11 to 15 knots of wind, going six knots right now. But we'll see how the Gulf Stream is. Right now the wind is completely shifted today, as predicted. It was directly in my face. And I turned and it was at 40, 45 degrees. Now it's about at 90, which means it'll be about directly north when I go through the Gulf Stream, which isn't the best, but it's only 15 knots of wind, so I'm hoping it's really good and I don't have to stop an anchor. I'm so ready to get back. I have a big list of projects. Can't wait to see my little baby. Uh, apparently he's been rambunctious and I'm sure he's grown so much in the past two and a half weeks. But I'll have one night before I'm back here. So I'll be back in this exact spot in about three days. Today's the 23rd. Yeah, I'll be about, I'll be right in this spot in three days going the other direction.
then I have to go dock in a slip I'm very used to, but again, with a different boat and a very shallow draft and a huge island right in front of it. So it's a super tight squeeze and I won't be backing in like so what we're supposed to. Um, so I'm not comfortable with that yet. So hopefully the wind doesn't pick up at four knots right now. And this way the bridge opening. I kind of made it. I guess if anything goes wrong at this point I'm safe. But this is probably the most stressful part of this whole journey for me. It's going through this bridge and then docking at my final destination. Um, hopefully I dock by 8 a.m. I get groceries, see if I can fill up my dinghy, get my water tank squeezed, and start working. It's Christmas Eve, so I'll be seeing family, so I have until 30 or 2.30, so I need a shower at the time. So. I just got fuel. The guy at the stand was so sweet. And there's no wind right now. Um, no freaking wind. I mean, it says I have one knot of wind, but I'll take that. So I'm coming up on my dock. And this will be my first time. T docks are okay, I don't mind that. Um, but this will be my first time backing into a slip solo. I'm ecstatic that there's no wind. Do a lot of practice out in an open area. Um, just getting comfy with how she backs up. Um, so I'm a little stressed. I am exhausted. My boat is a mess. But I'm, I think it's almost 8 a.m. and I, I think I should be docked and tied up by 8 a.m. All my lines are ready. I get to start on all my projects. <laughs> If you like this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow on Patreon. You guys mean the world to me. And this little guy, you're going to be seeing more of next episode.